Hello, thank you for joining me. What has a cucumber, a grid, a hoover, and a hairdryer got to do with railways? Well, they are all nicknames of either a locomotive or a multiple unit. And in this video, this being one of my lockdown videos from home, I thought we'd talk about some of the nicknames that locomotives and multiple units that work on Britain's railways and the railways of further afield have because I do sometimes mention them in my video and um, I try and make my videos as clear as possible but there's been the odd time someone said oh what's that um you know like um it's usually fairly obvious someone asked me the other day what a cucumber was so um I'm going to go through I'm not going to do every nickname of every locomotive that's ever existed but I thought you know we'll have a bit of fun and um you know we'll just go through some of them so what we would do is we shall start with the diesels, an 08 shunter, like just pulling in now. These are known as gronks, and apparently it's because of the sound they make. 09s are also known as gronks. So that's the 08 for you. Um, going up the classes, the next biggest loco I'm gonna go on to is a class 14. They were known as teddy bears because they were designed in Swindon and they were quite little. They're a bit like this, but with a bit of an extra sort of bonnet bit on here, I know it's not a very good description, um, I'll put a picture in now. So you see what I mean? The reason they're called teddy bears is because Swindon, they designed their one and only Pacific, the Great Bear, and then they designed these little diesels, so they said well they've designed Great Bear, so why not call this one a teddy bear? Then we move on to the class 20s. Now class 20s, for those of you who don't know, basically look a bit like this but longer and they don't have the six wheels, they have Bobo wheel arrangements, that's like two um, sets of four wheels. Now they are known as choppers because of the sound they make and also known as wardrobes because all along the side like here they have a load of doors. Then there's the class 24 and 25s, they're known as rats. The reason they're known as rats is because they were found everywhere in the 70s and 80s and they were just everywhere so that's why they were known as rats. And then there's the class 26 and class 27, they're known as mook rats because basically they're the same but they spent most of their lives in Scotland. Next one we'll move on to is a class 28, they are known as Kobos. Now for those of you who used to watch Thomas the Tank Engine you'll know there's a locomotive called Boko, well he is one of those but they've just swapped the name round. The reason is it has six wheels on one bogey and four wheels on the other. So that's where why they're called Kobo. So they just the Reverend Audrey swapped the name round and called him Boko, which I think is quite cool. Then there's the class 31s. They have a rather amusing nickname. They're known as Toffee Apples, and that's because the driver's joystick looked like a toffee apple. But some of them have a head code on the front. And the ones that didn't were known as skinheads because they looked like a skinny sort of head. Then there's class 33s. They're known as Cromptons. Not obvious when you see a picture of one. The reason they're called Cromptons is because of the electrical equipment they used. Class 37s are known as Growlers or Tractors. The growler is because they make a characteristic growl as they pull away. The tractors is because they're basically sort of shaped like that, so vaguely like a tractor. So that's why they're known as tractors or growlers. You often hear about, I remember when they used class 37s on the lines from Norwich to Great Yarmouth and Lowestoft, um, you'd hear people referring to the tractor bashers. They were people who would buy a Wary Lines Ranger ticket and they'd spend all day going up and down on them. I, I did it, I went to Great Yarmouth Model Village and I went on the class 37s to take me there. Now we move on to the class 43s, the power cars for the HSTs, high speed trains, which are very much loved by enthusiasts and I really, really miss them running out of King's Cross and Paddington, um, but you know, times kind of have moved on. They've, on the Great Western, they've been replaced by these things, cucumbers. Um, so I just tend to call them an HST or an intercity, but some people call them trams. Now you may think, well, that's a strange nickname. The reason they're known as trams is because they, um, there's it's always a an argument, is it a locomotive, is it a multiple unit? And some people say, nah, it's neither, it's a tram. J just to be silly, really. 
then our next one, I'm going to have to ask you to to um, leave the stage, um, the Gronk, the 08, so goodbye. You'll be back later though. So as the 08 disappears, we have something else coming to join us. Well, coming onto stage now and making quite a bit of a racket is a Class 47, and they are known as Duffs. Either because they broke down or they had to um, re replace the diesel logo that had broken down on other trains. So Class 47s are known as Duffs, and this one's not going great today. It's making a bit of a noise. So, um, yeah, Class 47, right, off you go. Oh, well, there we go. The Duff name is, um, you know, shown us to its full effect there. I think I know what we're going to have to do. Living up to its Duff nickname, it won't go. I've had to bring the Gronk back. Here we go. So the Gronk, struggling a little bit, but it's going to manage, is going to now tow the Duff off the stage. So goodbye to the Duff. Living up to its nickname of Duff. Struggling a bit. My hands are going to help. No way its wheels are spinning quite a lot. So that was Class 47 for you. I have to say I've had many many trips behind class 47s i've never ever had one fail on me so um maybe that's a bit of an unkind nickname to call them duffs although this one did seem determined to uh, live up to it maybe it was just playing up for the cameras who knows the next one we've already in the intro we showed a hoover well that was class 50 and they are known as hoovers really because of the sound they make and i remember at old oak common open day it was great they had six of them together and i stood there next to them so it wasn't Henry de Hoover, so you know, don't don't go calling me a Hoover, but it wasn't Henry de Hoover, it was Henry and the Hoovers. Which I always found was, you know, quite fun. Staying with the Western region, we're moving on to the class 52s. They're known as Westerns because they are named are, all of the names are like such so Western Champion, Western Pathfinder, Western Cavalier. So they're Western everything. And they're also nicknamed Thousands because their numbers are in the Thousand series. So Western Champion is D1015. Western Champion is my favourite one. First one I had for haulage. I actually had it on a rail trip all the way from Penzance to London Paddington. So I'm really proud, you know, that I can say I've done that. Um, and then there's a, there's a few others around on Heritage Railways. Um, so you do see them. Sometimes they run as Class 52s. That's their... Um, that's their tops number which was the later scheme but their original pre-tops numbering were d thousand etc then we move on to the class 55 it's probably the most um common nickname used pretty much by everyone that's the deltics that's because they're deltic engines and then going back to our intro the grids class 56 is they may think well why on earth would a loco be called a grid how does that come about well have a look at a picture of one See on the front there's a grid, that's where their horns are, and the grid is, you know, to stop all um, bits of leaves and dust getting in the horns, basically. And um, because their grid, you know, is sort of, when you see them coming towards you, you see the grid on the front, they got the nicknames grids. Now our next one, Class 57s. Now, if you have a look at a picture of one, if you think it looks like a Class 47, you're right. It is the same body as a Class 47, but what they did, they took the engines out and replaced the engines with General Motors engines. So that was where the 57 came from, and for that reason, their nicknames are Body Snatchers, because basically all they are is a new engine. They've snatched the bodies off old Class 47s. Then the next one, Class 58, they're known as Bones. Now, the reason they've got that name is because, um, what I'm going to do, let's bring the 08 shunter back, shall we? So here's the 08 shunter. Now, as I said, it has a cab at one end and it doesn't have a cab at the other end. Well, the Class 58s, obviously, they're much longer. They're not a shunter. They're a proper, you know, a full size. Well, you know what I mean? A, a big locomotive. They're not little. They have a cab at each end, but they have a narrow bit. I'm just going to lift it off the track so you can see a narrow bit like this in the middle. So for that reason, they're named Bones because they look like a very, you know, um, squarish sort of bone. Then our next ones are class 59s. They're known as Yanks. Now, if you have a look at a picture, they look very similar to a class 66. They basically are the same body, but they're much older. They're about 20 years before class 66s. So um, they're known as Yanks because they came from America. And then um, we'll get onto 66s in a minute, but they are also known as Daddy Yanks is another name, um, or Daddy Sheds. We'll talk about Sheds in a minute. 
because they are like the older Class 66s. Then we have the Class 60. They're known as tugs because they are proper, you know, real heavyweight locos. They can pull really, really heavy trains. Now, as for Class 66s, their nickname, well, I don't have one to show you, but I've got a little idea. I'm going to send the OA off to do some work. So as our OA, or Gronk, arrives again, he's pulling a wagon this time. You can see there's a shed on it. Now, it's not really the right shape sort of shed, but you know, it's a it's a model of a shed. Class 66s are called sheds because they have the, um, basically the shed-like shape. So Class 66 are known as sheds. They're also known as Yang Yangs because when they start up, they kind of go Yang 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 Yang. Then the next class is a Class 67. So I'm just gonna send the OA in the shed away. Yo 8's just coming back. What have we got this time? We've got two wagons this time. And on, on them we have skips. The skip. Class 67's are known as skips because if you turn a skip upside down, that is basically your shape of a Class 67. So they're an upside down skip. The next one, Class 70's, I don't have one to show you. And um, so here's a picture. As you can see, they're not the prettiest of locos, so they have various um, not so nice nicknames. They're known as Ugly Ducklings or Fugly or Predators. And, you know, it's a shame, really, they did make them so ugly. I don't know. Um, they're very functional, you know. That's that's why they're not the most attractive loco, say, like, um, you know, a Class 37 um, or a 47. You know, that's why they're not like that. So, moving on to the electric locos, there's the Class 73. Now, these are interesting locos because they run off the third rail and they're also diesel as well. They have a diesel engine, so they can go, they can work, they tend to work trains on the third rail, but then they'd also work along non electrified branches off the third rail. And they are known as EDs for short for electro diesel, so that's the name ED. They're also known as shoe boxes because they look like a shoe box and because they have shoes and they are like a box. So, um, that's where that one comes from. Then the class 76s, the locos that worked on the Woodhead route. There's one in Manchester Museum of Science and Industry, there's one in the National Railway Museum. There's a couple of others about, put a picture in now. They're known as Tommies. That's because the first prototype one was called Tommy. Then we move on to the West Coast Main Line. We have the class 81, 82, 83, 84 and 85. They're known as roarers, basically because of the roaring noise they make. And then um, the class 87s, they're known as vans. I'm not really sure why. Anyone want to comment and tell me, you know, please do. Then we move on to the class 90s. Now this is a rather amusing nickname. They call them Skoda. So here's a picture of class 90. Here's a picture of Skoda Estelle. See the vague resemblance, so that's why they're known as Skodas. Now, going back to the hairdryer, that is the nickname for a Class 91s, and that is because when they pull out of a station, they sound very much like this, just as they sort of pull away. And some people also call them Larders. I think that's because Skodas are, you know, the Class 90s. They thought it'd be fun to add the name Larder, and they do vaguely look like um, a Larder estate. They sort of have a vague similarity shape, um, so that's where why they're known as lard. I think it's because on a larder reaver estate, the end is sort of this shape, like the front of a class ninety one. So, yeah, that's why they're known sometimes as larders. But I prefer the nickname hair dryers for them. Then the class ninety twos, they're known as Dysons, and that's because I think they sound like a Dyson vacuum cleaner. Basically, they're a bit like the class fifties and the Hoovers. Now we move on to the multiple units. So here we have, pulling onto the stage now, a class 121. These are known as bubble cars, basically because they're like a bubble car. Now this one, this is 121020. I used to travel on this one every day to college when I did an engineering course in Aylesbury. I used to go on this, this actual unit, because there was only ever one Chilton Railways one in this colour. Then. After that, Chilton Railways bought another one, which um, that was 121034, that was green in BR Green. So they, you know, you'd get one or the other. So then a few times I'd made a couple of trips to Aylesbury to have a ride on um, 121034. And then finally on their last day, back in, it was 
May 2017, the two of them ran together and I went there. I had to go and, you know, say goodbye because not only was it the last day of first generation DMUs on the national network, it was also the last day of vacuum braked trains on the national network. So really it was as significant as um, August 1968 when they ran the 15 guinea special. So I'm really, obviously I couldn't have been there in 1968, but I did go and see the rerun in 2008 when Oliver Cromwell called the northbound train, I went to Ribblehead Viaduct. But anyway, I, I didn't see the real thing, but I did see the real, the last day of first generation DMUs on the national network. So I'm quite proud of that. Then um, staying with the multiple units, um, we have various other, um, we, we work up the classes. I'm not gonna go through all of them because um, the names aren't quite as affectionate for multiple units, but quite a common one, a Pacers. That, that was their official name and that's a name, you know, they are referred to as Pacers and a lot of the general public and the media refer to them as Pacers. But they have other nick, you know, they have other nicknames. One of them is Nodding Donkeys or Bouncy Castles because, you know, they're quite bouncy. Although, I must say, if you travel on a pacer on jointed rail, on not, I mean, on non-welded rail, the ride is actually quite smooth. So it's a bit unfair they get that. And I'm so pleased that so many are being preserved now as they come to the end of their working lives. Moving up onto the 150s, they're known as Sprinters, and that was really a brand name for BR. Um... Then all the other sprinters, the 153s, the 155s, the 156s, 158s, 159, are known as super sprinters. The 153s, because they're single cars like this, they, I are known, well, there's a couple of names. Some people call them dog boxes, I call them skateboards. I think that's a, a more amusing name. I wouldn't say a skateboard suits this one so much, but I'd say the 153s, because they're that much longer, um, I'd say it suits them. Then the 158s, although super sprint, they're a super sprinter, some people call them coffins, because if you have a look at the front of one, the door on the front looks a bit like a coffin. Now we move on to the class 165s and 166s, the Networker Turbos. So most people tend to refer to them as turbos. They have been known as Coke cans because they're aluminium. And then came the Turbo Stars, the Class 170s, or originally it was the 168s for Chilton Railways. Most of the Turbo Stars are 170s. Well, actually, Chilton Railways called their 168s Clubmans. That was Chilton Railways name, and they still stick with that name. But the 170s are used by various operators, and there's also the 171 and 172. They're also all types of Turbo Stars, and they have an electric cousin, which can be anything from a 377, a 357 on the lines out of Fenchurch Street, and there's 375 that do um, the Kent lines. They are Electro Stars. And then you've got Class 378. They're known as Capital Stars because they they were the London Overground ones. So they're all cousins of the same sort of train. On the older DMUs, back to this sort of generation, unfortunately I don't have one to show you, but they are some of probably the most um, popular DMUs ever. Actually, they're diesel DEMUs, diesel electric multiple units. And they were the class 205s, 207s, 201s, thumpers, because they have that thumping sort of sound. I can't really do an impersonation of it, but they do, they have a very thumping kind of noise. They also had some in Northern Ireland. They weren't the same, but some of the Northern Irish DMUs were also known as thumpers, really, for the same reason. Moving on to the um, more modern DMU's ones, I have to say I don't particularly like, and that's the Voyagers, introduced by Virgin. Um, now they're used by Cross Country and Avanti West Coast and Midland Mainline. Well, they're not called Midland Mainline anymore. East Midlands Trains, um, they they use them. Now, the thing with Voyagers, there's two reasons why I really don't really like them much. One is they replaced Class 47, so some of the, as what in my opinion, was some of the best trains. The Class 47, the 7 Mark IIs, you know, it's such a poor replacement, a four-car Voyager, because they're, they're always overcrowded, there's never enough seats. There isn't, you know, you know I, don't, I don't really want to go off on a rant, but, um, and, and, and so yeah, they're, they're too short, and they replace some of the best trains you ever had, so that's why I'm not a fan of Voyagers. So most people call them Voyagers, because that was the brand name Virgin gave them. I, I don't, I'm not this unkind, but some of you just call them vomits because they do smell, but I'm, I'm, I just call them voyages. I don't want to be that unkind, even though I don't particularly like them that much. That said, I've, I've been on most of them because I travel a lot between the Midlands and the South, so I probably will end up going on all of them. 
We're going to now move on to the electric mulse for units. I'm going to have to ask the um, 121 to go. I had to give it a little nudge there, it didn't seem to want to leave. So with the class 121 off stage, we're now going to move on to the electric multiple units. Now coming back towards the stage, well, we have our old friend again. The OH Shunter. Now what on earth have we got here? Well, we have two wagons with bins on them. Now this isn't the rubbish train going to Calvert. Imagine that. Imagine if an OH Shunter hauled the rubbish train to Calvert. That said, I can remember class 47s working them. I should have perhaps got the 47 to pull this. But anyway, we've got the 08, the class 47 one was behaving earlier. Why on earth have I bought bins here? Look, we've got some wheelie bins, we've got some dust bins. I know they're tiny because they are OO scale, so you might not be able to see them, but this is what they are. The reason I've bought dust bins on, and that is for the class 321 EMUs. Now, they're known as dusty bins, really, because of their class number, because of the game show, 321. I, I can't do it. I'm probably going to end up sticking a middle finger up as when I do it. But basically, Ted Rogers, he used to go 321, so he'd have all three fingers up, and they'd all kind of go down in some way. But when, whenever I try and do it, I always end up giving someone a middle finger, so I'm not going to do it, but he did 321 really quickly and um, you went on this game show and if you lost your kind of booby prize was a dusty bin although a bit more luxury than this one it was actually like in the shape of a money box so three two ones have always been known as dusty bins then we move on to the class 365s they have a couple of interesting nicknames they they now work um, out of King's Cross although most of the class are stored S some of them originally worked on the southeastern for Conics, a company that no longer exists. And those ones, when they then transferred to work out at King's Cross, they were known as XCOMs for fairly obvious reasons. But the, the name I like for them is they're known as Happy Trains, because have a look at one. It looks like they're smiling, so yeah, the Happy Trains they're known as. Then we move on to, when we've mentioned the Voyagers, well, the electric trains that arrived at the same time, the Pendolinos. Well, Pendolino is a name for, you know, tilting electric trains from Italy, and they operate in various other countries. Um, the Virgin Pendolino, as they were known now, they're of anti-West Coast. Um, I call them Pendolinos. There is a nickname, I'm not going to say it on, on this, it's, it's a rather rude nickname, so do look it up if you, if you, you want to know, it's quite an amusing one. Um, that's their other nickname. Um, that would only really apply to the British ones, because if you have a look at all the other Pendolinos, they're not quite that same shape. I must say, I really like Slovenia's Pendolinos. I've never been on one, but they've only got three of them, and they're only three carriages. Imagine that, if the West Coast Mainline only had a free of three free coach Pendolinos. But they're really cute. Slovenia's a small country. They don't need such longer Pendolinos. So, um, yeah, that's the Pendolinos. Going back to the southern region, we've got a couple of interesting ones. There was the class 404s. They were known as Nelsons because they had a very sort of one-eyed appearance. They had like a head code over one window. So, it, you know, it kind of gave them that one-eyed appearance. And I think they also went down to Portsmouth, which, you know, is obviously associated with Lord Nelson, etc. Then from Portsmouth to Weymouth, I remember travelling down, not as far as Weymouth, as far as Paul, on a class 442. They're known as the Plastic Pigs. They're basically Mark III carriages that are electric from a third rail. They look a bit like a pig on the front, if you have a look at a picture of one. And um, they say they were plastic, and very sadly, the first one has actually recently been scrapped. I saw some pictures of it being scrapped at Eastleigh Works. Um, some are being refurbished for use with South West trains, so they're going back to their old haunts. They, after South West finished with them, they worked for the Gatwick Express for a while. And then there was a diagram down to Eastbourne, which I always wanted to do, but I never got around to it. Some are around, so you can still enjoy them. So, yeah, that's the, the Class 442s, the plastic pigs. Now, going back to where we started cucumbers the class 800s the 801s the 802s the reason they're known as cucumbers is basically because they look like a giant cucumber these are only the great western ones because they're green they're literally disc green and they do look like a giant cucumber but most people tend to refer to all of them as azumas and that was a name when virgin were in charge of east coast they that was the brand name they come up with azuma which is japanese for east because they're japanese designed trains although not all of them, quite a lot of them were built in Newton Aircliffe in Britain, so which is good. Some were built in Japan, some were built in Italy. So most people tend to refer to those used by um, East Coast, or NLER as they're called now, Transpennine, Hull Trains. Um, they tend to refer to them 
as Azumas, but um, yeah, the Great Western ones, some people call them Azumas, I like to call them cucumbers. Let's go abroad now. Um, if you go to France, they're fading away now, but I, did, I had a trip on one once um, from Lourdes to Toulouse. Some people call these locos, we'll have a look at them. Two, two nicknames, and they both suit them. Zigzags, fairly obvious reasons. The other one are Bardos, because people say they look very much like Brigitte Bardot, but I think that only applies to the French ones, because Portugal has them, Slovenia has them, various other countries have them, the Netherlands has them. So most people call them Zigzags, but the French ones are known as Bardos. So, um, yeah, that's a funny one. Staying on the continent, there's the DB Class 218s. They're known as Rabbits, because if you look at them... Um, they have a um, the way the exhausts go, they kind of go like that, like two rabbit ears. So, yeah, class um, 218 are known as rabbits. In let's go to Budapest now and talk about trams. There's the Siemens Combinos. Now, that is a brand name, but the Siemens Combinos in Budapest they're known as the giant caterpillars because they're so long. They were the longest trams in the world at the time. There were six segments trams and they were big, giant yellow things that would. Go, they mainly work on routes four and six, known as the Grand Voulard route. It was the it's the busiest tram route in the world, and it had the longest trams. But they're no longer the longest trams in the world. But the accolade is still held by Budapest because CAF, the Spanish company, um, they made some even longer trams for Budapest. So Budapest still has the world's longest trams. But yeah, the Siemens Combinos in Budapest are known as giant caterpillars. The other Hungarian tram I think are quite funny. Some people call them the two room and a bath trams. Um, I actually remember that originally they worked in Budapest and they worked in Debrecen and Mischkoltz and Seged. I've been on one in Debrecen. When I went to Debrecen the first time, there was still a couple in service. And um, I was just walking through the city centre and suddenly I saw one. And I can't remember what I was supposed to be doing, but I abandoned it, ran across and jumped on it. So these are known as two room and a bath trams because it's like two rooms and a bath. And the other name they have is Bengalis, because some people say they're like it's like poverty stricken India. They're so sort of um, rough, like and you know like the Bengali tigers. So yeah, that's another name. That really, there are so many nicknames for trains, both in the UK and abroad. So you know, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you can tell me any others I've missed, because I'm I wasn't gonna try and do every one of them, but you know there might be some I don't know. So if you want to tell me, please do. Or if you tell me any other nickname, so like um I can't imagine they do, but say three two ones. Do they have another nickname? Because like I said, some trains or locos have three or four nicknames. So you know please do comment and tell me any other nicknames you know of. I'd be really interested to hear from you. Hope you enjoyed this video from lockdown as Hopefully as the lockdown starts to ease, within reason, I'm hopefully going to get out and about soon and do some more out and about videos because um, that is more what I prefer doing. Although I have quite enjoyed doing this one, it's been an excuse to get my old Hornby train set out. Um, so yeah, so hopefully soon we'll be out and about. I won't be going probably, miniature railways aren't going to be open just yet so there won't be any miniature railways. There'll still be my archive series, but I'm hoping to get out and about, perhaps go for some more countryside walks so I can effectively socially distance. And I'll go out on my daily exercise, but I'm going to take a camera with me and make some videos. So do watch out for them. Hope you enjoyed this video, and hopefully it won't be too long before we can all get back on the trains and um, you know ride some dusty bins and go to Germany and maybe get the last rabbits, or go to Budapest and ride a giant caterpillar, or you know go to a heritage railway and ride a toppy apple or a growler or a duff. You know, um, hopefully the rail tours will start running soon, and we can have um, well, it's not mainline certified at the moment, but say the western we could have a, a western hauled rail tour or um you know all just let hopefully we'll, we'll all be back to how it used to be so i really hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching please do feel free to like subscribe comment tell your friends thank you very much goodbye